Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, my screen is not sharing. One sec. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the third week of the JavaScript session. Seems like we got uh, almost 100% of everybody to show up for the JavaScript session from the Python session. So that's great. You're learning both languages and having a great time. So welcome back. Quick introduction. Uh, you guys already know who I am. My name is Rayan. I'm a rising senior at James B. Conan High School. I love to code. I made a, do a dozen different websites, made multiple apps for the iOS app store. I like to make some YouTube videos on the side. You can find me at rayansiddiqui.com. And now, Andrew. Now, as always, uh, I am, thank you, Rayon, for the introduction. I am Andrew Choi. I am going to be seen to be a freshman at Purdue University uh, come this fall in some form, of, some form or another. Uh, I do a lot of coding. I know multiple languages. Uh, I do like illustrating as, as a side, and I sort of combine some of this as a computer graphics enthusiast. So uh, I do love uh, the way you can uh, create visuals with uh, coding. Uh, I have made a few projects just like Rian, and you can check them at, at my website at andrewchoy.info. So yeah. All right. question from anonymous uh, attendee. Uh, this is actually just the agenda post. So I think, uh, Rian, you could probably explain that. Yep. So ask the question in the perfect nick of time. The agenda for today is as outlined. We're going to be going over some, ter some terms with a quick activity. We're going to discuss the maze block code answers and finish all the maze uh, today, along with some other block code. We'll answer any questions you guys have. And then we might do the last block code activity before we make our transition to actually typing code out next week. All right. So... Uh, we've discussed what if and else statements were, but Andrew, you want to give a quick, quick overview uh, from last hey, episode? Uh, uh, quick review. Yep. Uh, in case like anyone who is here is now part of the, uh, the Python class. Uh, do you know, Ryan, if there's anyone actually here that is a part of the Python class? Uh, let's see. I believe there's one kid who was not uh, Ayush. So okay. let's do a quick over him. All right. So uh, if statements, if statements are ways of conditionally. Um, some people are doing the panel. Uh, what is one second? Okay. okay. Yep. All right. So if statements are a way to tell the computer to perform tasks uh, when a certain condition is met. Now, what that means is that we do not want computers to always do the things that we tell them to do. Sometimes when we, uh, when we program, we want some, uh, say, if you had an alarm, uh, you, the condition in that instance would probably be, uh, at a, you set an alarm for a certain time, and when come that time, the alarm will sound, and if you're trying to wake up or remember a meeting, uh, you will be alerted. Now, it would be weird, for instance, if a computer were to sound an alarm at random. Uh, then there is no condition set there, and we have an unsatisfactory uh, alarm app that probably no one would buy on the App Store. So, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, if statements, very important tool in software and uh, computer science in general. Yep. Now, here's a quick example of everyday life of how if statements can apply, like another analogy. So we experience if statements every day when we're driving with our parents, driving by ourselves. If a light is red, you stop with the car. If a light is yellow, then you evaluate the circumstances. If you're really close, you go all the way. And if the light is green, you're going. So this is like a real example of how if else statements apply in our everyday life and yeah. Now we watched this video uh, last session as well, but seems like we have some new people. So we'll share it again. This is a conditional block. 
the code inside a conditional block runs if a condition is true. In puzzles with conditionals, we might want to check a condition like if path ahead. This code will only move forward if there is a path ahead. You can use conditionals in lots of different ways, like this. Hold on, there's uh, someone who says we can only see part of the screen. So uh, can you clarify, Neil, uh, how much of the screen can you see? Uh, that should be better. Oh, okay. What if you want something else to happen if a condition is false? You can use an if else block for that. This code will move forward if there is a path ahead. Otherwise, it will turn left. Your code will either move forward or turn left, but never both. This is helpful if you want your code to make decisions based on certain conditions. Here are some more ways you can use conditionals in if else blocks. Uh, I believe we just have people who have just joined uh, in the attendees. So uh, would you like us to recap a few things or would you be safe uh, going forward because we did just recap if else statements if you were part of the previous uh, lesson? Uh, I'm looking at a quick chat. Neil still has some difficulties with the uh, viewing, so. All right, so Aryav, uh, are you from the, did you participate in the Python class or are you new to our curriculum? Well, either way, uh, I guess we should just yep. recap in general. Yep. Uh, let's at least give them uh, the stoplight example in conjunction with a quick definition of if statements. Yep. Uh, because we have people just joining. Yeah, so from last session, in case we, it looks like we have two people who were not a part of last session. Essentially, we made a quiz game in which we you know, used if statements in actual block coding, which are all in the Google Classroom if you want to check out. We posted it right away. Um, but basically, the main idea is that if else statements are like, if a condition is met, then certain code runs. Else, if that condition is not met, that code would not run, and uh, a certain piece of other code will run. And we'll explain more of that, you know, as we go into uh, actually coding. But that's just us relating it to real life examples to provide a better visualization of what this code is actually doing. So, you want to show Andrew how it relates to actual? You mean like uh, with like like actually demonstrating it with code or? Uh, okay, well, this picture I guess is fine then. All right, so this is probably the how actual coders probably code with a keyboard. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, thank you, Rand. Uh, so this is actually how actual coders, you should, excuse me, uh, my pop filter just falls real quick. All right, <laughs> continue what I just said. So generally when coders actually develop, they do not use block code, they actually use uh, with the keyboard and with a quick uh, typing interface. So this is how someone would uh, code in JavaScript. They would uh, write down an if and then have a conditional block uh, in this case, it's not an actual block. It's we use parentheses to uh, indicate the location the condition will be uh, put. And the brackets will be there to indicate uh, that that is the chunk of code that will run if the condition is met. And you see the same system works with the else. There's another uh, sort of left bracket, right bracket, anything within that uh, area will, in fact, uh, perform and execute. Yep. All right, so let's put everything we've been learning for the past three weeks together now. And let's finish that maze. And just to recap, we've learned about variables and how they store values. We learned about functions and how they store code and allow us to simplify our code. 
we learn about loops, which allow us to perform a certain action multiple times to make our lives easier. And today, we learn about if then and if else statements and how they can apply to make certain things execute in code. So using all of those concepts which we've learned, let's finish the maze and uh, one more block coding exercise. So if everybody can please hop on the website, the URL is right here. Uh, I'll drop it in the chat box as well. And please let us know when everybody is on. And uh, if you have problems getting into the website, uh, feel free to ask a question in the chat or uh, more preferably the Q&A and we will be able to assist you. Uh, else you can always say uh, I am in in the chat that also works. Anonymous attendee asks, are we going to do level 10? Uh, would you like to answer that, Rian? Uh, we'll, I think we're going to stop at 8 and 9. We're not going to go all the way to 10 because it uh, looks like we got some new people. We don't want to go. Level 10 is a bit more complex. All we right. might do that for next week, but um, yeah. All right, looks like everybody is. All right, I think we are ready to start the activity. Yep. Uh, All right, so let's go on to the website and let's hop on back over to our maze. And I believe last week we left off on level eight. Okay, all right, so we are going to cover, uh, you know, apply everything which we've learned over the last three weeks. And one of the first things which we learned was about functions and loops. So for this uh, block code, we're probably going to have to use a, a loop because we want the, the, our character to move multiple times. And adding nine separate uh, move forwards 
would be pretty tiring and it would not be efficient. So let's look at how we can use the loop in order to execute our code. So let's put our loop, which remember only runs until a certain condition is still being met. And then now we want our guy to make a left turn and then go ahead. So we're probably gonna have to use an if statement right here and put that if there's a path to the left, please turn left. Otherwise, if there is a path to the right, make a right turn. So once the character reaches right here, it'll make a left turn. And then once it reaches till this point, it'll make a right turn. But then there's one command missing because our character still has to move forward. So let's see how this actually runs. There we go. And now you can see that this is being related to actual code as well, showing how while this condition is uh, until it is not met, all of the code inside the loop will keep on executing. And we can see our if statement right here and uh, how these functions are allowing our character to move. Well, let's move on over to level nine. Oh, I. Okay. So we want to give you guys a couple minutes to mess around and see if you guys can figure out the solution. We'll give you guys about four or five minutes and um, then we'll go over the answers. Try to combine that same idea of a loop and even have to use an if else statement.
So, uh, Rion, how long did you say we were giving them? We'll give them a minute more, and then uh, we will go over the answer. All right. Alright, so hopefully you guys have been able to mess around. Before I get to the answers and start uh, doing the block code action myself, has anybody figured it out? So, uh, Sadan, uh, okay, so we have Neil and uh, Sharia and a lot of people actually coming in up with the solution. Uh, we will be comparing that. Of course, uh, Ryan, can you show the solution first? Yep. Or should we see theirs? Uh, okay, how about we go with... Um, uh, wait one sec, let me choose one person at random. <laughs> We should probably clarify. Uh, does any does every anybody here not have access to screen sharing? Okay, so the person who just um, All right. So, uh, yeah. Well, looks like that some people do not. Um, okay, so do you want to share the person who just commented? Okay, so Shari does not share uh, the person before. How do you share, Neil? Uh, you can share uh, using the, uh, the green button. In, well, actually, can non-panelists share the screen? Um, if I can give them access. So looks like uh, the person who just commented, I don't know if I, uh, I think he can share. The person who just, uh, wait, one, oh, hold up. One second. Yeah, you guys, I'm gonna give, okay, so Ayush, how about you wanna share? Let me give you access to share your screen. All right, Aish, uh, your time to shine. Here is the your part of the panelists, and you will share your answer. And it won't allow. It won't allow me to. It says only the host can share in this meeting. Okay, you should, like yeah, co-host yeah. and then not co-host, like like op yeah. and diop. Uh. Okay, give me one second. Let me try something else. Um, All right, how about uh, if that does not work out, you can always uh, take a screenshot of your screen and we can see the solution as, say, a quick, you can post your image into the chat. Okay, let me make him a co-host. So uh, you, sh you should be able to share your screen now. Oh, okay, uh, I guess we're doing that. Yeah, uh, one sec, I think I got to figure it out. Uh... Where did he go? Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Okay, so you should be able Still to. Oh, wait, now it does. All right, good, good. Getting a uh, message from uh, Nisha Benley from the Google Classroom. Uh, let me tend to that real quick. Are you, are you able to share? There we go. All right, uh, we're doing question nine or eight, right? Uh, nine, yes, nine, uh, nine. yeah. 
All right, let's see, uh, see your answer. All right, uh, Great. claps for uh, a, a huge. Great job. Thank you for uh, sharing your solution, Ayush. Uh, we will, of course, make you not a co-host now. Uh, but uh, thank you for your solution. We will now share ours, which, uh, Ryan, can you show? Uh, it should be rather similar, right? Yeah, it's like pretty much the same. Uh, one sec, let me take away his ability to be a co-host. All right, well, thank you, Ayush, for sharing. We would like more and more people as we go along to share their code. It's always great to see what you guys are doing. Anyway, here is my solution. And you might notice that mine is a bit different than Ayush's. And that's because there are multiple ways to solve this problem. I'm using just a loop and then checking if there's a path to go forward. Our character moves forward, otherwise, if you cannot move forward, there's a path to the left. Make a left and keep moving forward. All right. So hopefully that made sense. All right. All right. So I'm going to leave off number 10 for maybe another day because I want to start another exercise called, I believe it is Pond Tutor. Yeah, OK. So if everybody can navigate on, on over to Pond Tutor from the maze exercise. So there is actually someone in the Google Classroom that doesn't seem to have access to the call. Um, okay, let me hop on over in one sec. technical uh just uh we're just need to make sure everybody is in on the class so uh ayush uh needs the classroom code so uh i think i have it on my paste so yes yeah, so this is the sorry uh, i have to actually put it to all attendees so this is the actual code um, you can use this to get into our Google Classroom and hopefully you will be able to access all our materials. So, uh, Rand, did you get uh, it sorted out with that one? Yeah, I'm trying to send her the link right now. Cool. Looks like that link does not work for her as well. Okay, give me one second. Let me open up the whole Zoom. All right. Just take a seat. Real quick.
apologies for the interruption. I had to adjust my uh, desk height. Awesome. Okay. All right. So hopefully we got that whole Google Classroom issue uh, sound uh, sorted out now. Please be sure to join it. That's where we're posting all of our daily recaps along with uh, code examples. So let's begin the pond tutor exercise and combine more of those concepts together. So in this in this exercise, looks like what we have to do is change the angle of our cannonball to eliminate the other enemy. So if I run this, okay, so we need to change the angle to make sure that we hit our enemy. So say we make our right angle and like that. Okay. Like that, there we go, all right. So starting off with a function, which has some values, which is taking inside. All right, let's move on to some more difficult ones. Music can. So this time we're actually going to be typing out code and hopefully making that transition from block code to typing code in the programming language of JavaScript. Now, remember we have, and in represents our function, okay? And then the zero and 70, these are parameters. And these are values which the function is taking in. So we want to change those parameters to eliminate the enemy. So say we go 180 degrees and we'll go like a speed of 40, oh, a bit short. Pretty easy so far. Let's move on to some more difficult ones. All right, so now we're able to combine our idea with a loop because if you look at this, uh, I'll approximate the angle to be like 45 maybe. Uh, and then the, the distance, so let's make this 60. Okay, but you see how we only get one chance to run the program and we can't have multiple of these statements. So what we can do is now use a loop and what we can do is uh, we can now see that until the condition of the enemy having zero health is met, our cannonball will keep on firing. Now we can see a similar aspect, a uh, similar uh, uh, topic right here that we need to use a while loop again, which keeps on running until a certain condition is met in order to fully eliminate the red duck. So now what we can do is, let's change this to 270 degrees. Mess around with these values to see which one actually hits. But we actually gotta use a loop. Now, hopefully this will provide a smooth transition into actually typing some pieces of code out so we're not gonna be able to just drag and drop anymore. We're moving on, we're advancing. We can actually start typing code. Now let's use a while loop and we'll run it that until a condition is met of the enemy having zero health, we'll keep on hitting the enemy. Now let's see how that runs. Look at that. We typed a while loop to keep on executing until our enemy has zero health. Does everybody understand how that worked, how that syntax, how we type the while loop actually out instead of just dragging and dropping a block?
Okay, hopefully you can see my screen now. All right, oh, so, uh, yeah. yes. Brackets, yep, anyone explain? Uh, yes, so uh, somewhere on your keyboard, you will have something that isn't the parentheses. You'll have something called a bracket. Uh, I will just do a quick survey over your keyboard. It should be the one that is uh, of that shape. Yep, so shift plus whatever this key looks like. And that is the basic syntax. So we have the while loop. This is our condition inside. And then these are brackets which contain the code. All right, so let's move on to the next. Okay. Do you know how many of uh, how many of the pawn tiers we're doing? Well, this is the last one we'll wrap up. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, so now it looks like we got to use a separate command, that being a scan. So let's see. How this works. Um, I think you have to, um, Ryan, I think like the scan is so that it change dynamically changes the, uh, the length of the, the hit. Yeah. So, so you might want to put that in like the second, uh, parameter of the cannon. One second. Okay, just a few difficulties. Just Let me mess around with this. I think I'm. Need a... Okay, so this scan function, it's a bit weird. Okay, so let me try something else. What if we use the same idea of using for loop, like a while loop, right? We have the condition of a while loop until the enemy has no health remaining. We'll keep on firing to the, towards the left and until he has no more health left. So let's do 50. Yeah, that's why you need the scan command so it like dynamically changes the um Yup, yup, so the length. scan command, I'm not sure why it's not working. So just try it again and it's in one of the parameters, I'm sure. And then what if we try using Okay, this is being a bit weird. Okay, just like set to 180 degrees and and have the while loop. Um, or you could just like look at the documentation, it's probably yeah. easier. Okay, so let's try it now with Oh, okay. Um Okay. I'm you put it in the length parameter cuz it returns the range. 
The return is an angle, it seems like. Okay, one. What am I doing correctly right here? Uh, okay, let me try this. Away. Okay, one second. Uh, okay, so if I tr Oh, there we go. So it keeps firing in that angle. Okay, there we yeah, go. Yeah, that's what I've been saying, yeah. They give you like a prompt when you open it. Yep. All right. Well, <laughs> all right. There we go. So we've gone through the first five levels of Pond Tutor, applying those skills of a loop and the condition not being met and the loop keep on executing along uh, with some if else statements, not in this level, but in previous levels to defeat the enemy. Now, what we want you guys to do for next week is to finish the whole other, uh, four to five levels, you don't have to do level 10, but try to complete the next four levels of Pond Tutor, and we will go over that, and then we will start doing more activities with actually typing code and making that transition. So if you guys don't have any questions, uh, that was it for today's lesson. Anything you gotta add, Andrew, and then we're, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're uh, good for now, so... Uh... Hopefully you will be, you'll return and tell your friends if you need, uh, they need more code tutoring in their lives. So, uh, yeah. All right. Take it easy guys. We hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you guys on the next one. See you.